Game development. It's a nice way to cure gaming addictions <coughs> and potentially make some bread. That being said, I'm going to try and make a game before I start uni with no experience. To do this, I'll be using Unreal Engine 5, because who doesn't want to have ultra-realistic graphics? And why learn c -sharp when I can connect boxes with lines? It brings me back to when me and the boys would make games on scratch. I started off by creating a new project with the first person template, and that's when I realized I have no clue what the f**k I'm doing. So I spent a few days learning the whole system of Unreal Engine, blueprints, and began making a realistic camera movement, as well as focus where the camera will focus. And if you think I'm doing this only using tutorials, you're 100% right. Seriously, do you think I know what I'm doing? No, of course not. Afterwards, I created a Trello list so that I know everything I need to do, which later grew bigger. Wait a minute. Now, the concept of the game is that you take care of your neighbor's fox where you need to complete some chores and if you don't complete them, the fox will become a creature from a demonic dimension and attempt to kill you. Now you may be asking, why a fox? Why not a cat or a dog? But it's my game and I can do whatever I want. It's definitely not because I found a free animal pack with a fox that already had animations, a rigged body, and that I was too lazy to model and actually rig a pet and do animations. Trust me. I decided to call the fox Middens, which led to the game title, Take Care of Middens. Get it? Because if you don't take care of middens, you die? <laughs> yeah. I then worked on a pickup system, which is a basic need for any game, but was one of the most annoying and difficult things to make. I spent two days trying to make this shit, and even though I watched two tutorials, one tutorial didn't allow me to pick up multiple objects, and the other didn't allow me to drop items. So after two days, I decided that I will repeat the same block of codes for every single item that the player can pick up. It's annoying, but at least now you can drop items and not have them pull a dad when you pick up other items. I continued off by making the first chore, feeding middens, where I connected some lines, downloaded a meat and bowl asset in the quick thing, looked at some tutorials and ta -da, uh, and ta-da, it works. <laughs> With the feeding chore now done, I can just command C, command V some blocks, change some things and voila now we can clean and refill a little box yeah! to make it look extra spicy i looked through unreal engine's niagara system to make dust effects for removing and refilling the litter and by look i mean now with my newfound knowledge of the niagara system and definitely not just skipping through the tutorials to make the effect i also created a splat effect when you place the meat you can really see how juicy that meat is okay i need to stop now, you didn't click on the video to see me make people place litters in bins and meat on bowls. No, you came to see Devil Middens, I think. So anyways, I started off by creating a Devil Middens and by carefully rearranging the bones and limbs, I made this. I then did some tweaking so Middens is somewhat smiling. Hi, how are you? I was then questioning how the hell am I going to animate this? But thanks to Mixamo, I can just download other people's animations, our animations, and implement them to middens without paying a dollar. Money and time saved. But I worked on this later on because I need to work on normal middens before devil middens. Sadly, I know. So following a tutorial, I made middens follow me, which had Get interesting away. results. Get away from me. What are you doing? What the? <laughs> but later I got it working, and with this, I made it so that once you place the food in the bowl, middens will go and eat it using telepathic powers. Afterwards, I then made a door, but that got me thinking about the house. Now originally, I was going to download a model, but all of them cost more than my left kidney. Mm. So, after watching one tutorial, I made walls of the house, but you can just walk straight through them. So, I placed blocks on every single part of the wall and ta-da, we have walls. Wow. Who cares? I added floors, windows, and after 4 hours of doing so, my brain decided, hey, I should add small gaps in the wall so the player can go through and run away from cute middens. And because of this, I spent another 4 hours trying to add holes, what? but it was just causing Why? more problems, so I restarted the whole house model. I love this. And before I did all that, I had downloaded full path models and just added them on two sides to make streets. Afterwards, I just boop, 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 and the house is done. Not really. <laughs> I then learned that you can merge actors together. So instead of having 15 actors for all the windows, we can just squeeze them like this. And now we have 15 windows in just one actor, which will require less power and prevent my PC and those playing the game from becoming a bomb. Why did you I then started adding the actors from the template level to the house level. So we have Why a door that what? definitely works. Why? Why aren't you a little box, bowl, and no one cares. And now the best part of game development Decoration. When working on decorations, I did not realize how much it sucks. 
placing every single asset in the level, trying to find the right style, the right format. And if it wasn't, then I had to go to Blender to download it in the right format. It was just the most time consuming and annoying thing where I came to the conclusion that I don't like it. And I might just make EJ do all the level designs for future games. So after spending a goddamn week placing decorations, houses, grass, trees, and other shit, I worked on the day and night cycle because we don't want to have mittens staring at our souls during the day. Like, come on, that looks too... Uh, oh. During this, I also had issues with my PC because my monitor, being a thick boy, was causing a lot of video problems, which was lowering the performance. I was able to somewhat fix it later on, but the quality still looked crisp. Nice. Uh. After working on the time cycle, I quickly changed the kitchen design because it looked like a desk Oompa Loompa uses for meetings. Time was running short, I only had a week left before starting uni. I know it doesn't seem like it should have taken this long to do all of this, but listen here you little shit. I don't know what I'm doing. And half of the time I'm having stupid problems that I have no clue how to fix, nor Google. Bastard. I was no way near finishing the game, but it's fine, I can finish it if I just don't sleep and don't socialize. Oh. EJ and I did have to go to our uni's orientation day, that did cut a few hours of me working on the game, but that's fine, who needs sleep? Now without wasting time, I wanted to get important features for a trailer, because that would help with promotion and duh, a game can't be released without a trailer. You don't really need a trailer to upload a game, you can just finish all the features and yeah, well I want to skip, and I want a full experience of making a game, so fuck you, I'm making a trailer. With this, I added middens to the level and I worked on middens going to the food, because even though it was working before, middens decided to just, yeah. To clean the poo, Bruh. I decided that it would be too much work for Minus to go to the litter, take a sh** there, so instead Minus just gonna go to a random location, put it on the floor, and you'll have to pick it up oh. with your hand and place it in the bin. I was having trouble where as Minus would roam around the map, he would act like a GDA NPC. I had no clue how to fix this, and I also had no clue how to smoothly transition between multiple animations. And because of the tutorials weren't helpful, I hit my boy up. After understanding animation blueprints and connecting the animations together, I finished the play chore and decided to get rid of the brush chore because I'm running out of time and I can't be f***ed. I then went back to work on devil minions and as I was trying to add a skeleton mesh, it just wasn't working. And after two hours, I found out why and it was all because I didn't tick off the single button. What the f***? I then made minions follow the player and also added a roam script where she would just roam around and if you get caught, she would give you a nice hug. I then added animations using the same method as normal minions, but... Yeah. I actually downloaded two walking animations from Mixamo and after asking EJ which one he preferred, he chose the other one. Luckily, it isn't hard to do. All I have to do is get rid of this and bam, new animations. When on call, I asked EJ if he could help me with Midden's rotation as she would just snap her position when walking towards the player. But we got unwanted results. We then got it somewhat fixing, even though it wasn't perfectly smooth, but I was happy with it. I was getting tired of working on Midden's and the stupid animations, so I took a break by adding lights around the house, which turned out really cool at nighttime. And I love the pool table light, it looks so cool and spooky, and yes. I also added a door to the bathroom and garage because apparently I didn't add that. And we got the coolest part of the game, jump scare. This is gonna be so easy, I'm just gonna mix them up, get some free animation. So I have to use Blender to animate the jump scare. And I wanted a classic Five Nights at Freddy's jump scare. So... And none of these were useful. Frank me. But after looking at tutorials on Blender's animations, I was working on one where middens would have a head seizure and eat you as a snack. Okay, who wrote this script? You did, dude. Oh, yeah. Anyways, when trying to add it to Unreal, it wasn't working because the skeleton mesh didn't match. I spent two hours trying to find out why this was happening, and even remade the animations using a different mesh, and also got it somewhat working, not really, but I found out that the exporting method the guy was showing me in the tutorial wasn't right. I mean, it wasn't working for me, so... Thanks guy, not cool. Now because stupid me wasn't saving the blender files for the jump scare, I had to remake it for the third time. <coughs> Finally, after adding it to middens, I lined up and added some box, and now we have a jump scare. Nice. I then wanted smaller jump scare that would scare the player as they would play, so I made one where middens would walk past the sliding door, but it wasn't working. So I fixed it by placing middens all the way to Narnia, and made her spawn outside when the player hits an invisible box collision. I relied on the animation to walk from one point to the other, but because of this, if you look at a certain angle, she'll just... But that's fine. 
I then wanted to add another job scare because I want people to suffer. So I went to Blender, worked on an animation, did some light flickering, ooh, and ta-da, we have another jump scare. But it doesn't really look scary in the day, so let's just make it night and... I'm watching. Now with some jump scares done, I wanted to work on sound effects because we have ears for a reason, to sniff. I forgot to record this, but I borrowed some sound effects, tried to implement them, where in the end I added some walking sound effects, but when I tried to speed it up when the player was sprinting, it wasn't working, and I exited Unreal Engine without saving. But that's okay, I can work on it tomorrow, and we can- Uh, dude, I think we have uni tomorrow. So yeah, I didn't finish the game before I started uni, and I still have so many things to add. Mm. So there's gonna be a second part to the video where I'll finish the game and even make a trailer. <laughs> like, subscribe, smash the bell, not in that way. And yeah, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you-